Hey everyone, Thawsteve here, here at the NTX competition, here with 2714, the barbecue, the tastiest team in Texas as always. Really excited to talk about their amazing robot, finalist at the Waco and Dallas district event, third place in the Apollo division, as well as impact winners at Waco. Really excited to talk about their amazing robot that they've had throughout the season. Here with Harry, Lyndon, and Ryan to talk about their amazing robot with turreted sh uh, shooter, amp mechanism, all of those things here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. First Updates Now has become the Fun Robotics Network. Check us out at funroboticsnetwork.com and all the social links that you see above here. And check out some of our new merchandise options that are both fun and robotics related as well too, both on our website and right underneath this YouTube video. Harry, let's start off with you. Talking about your intake, let's talk about the path of the, the note, you're starting with your intake. Yeah, so from the beginning of the season, we started with a strategic breakdown. A couple of the things that we were sure about from the beginning is one, we want a full with intake. And two, we want to be under the bumper so that we can go head to head into combat on the field and not worry about an over the bumper intake breaking. Um, so we went ahead with that. We did a couple um, concept prototypes um, before ending up at this design. This is inspired by the 95 intake um, where the intake extends outside of the normal perimeter of the swerve drive base. Um, so we have our primary intake here, which is powered by two Neo Vortexes and um, just rev rounded hex shaft with rollers on it. Um, we basically just have a primary roller that initiates contact, a kick up roller on the bottom that can switch direction and omni wheels to keep it off the ground. Um, one of the things that we considered when um, committing to this intake design was whether we wanted um, a double sided shooter that could kind of pivot to both sides or a double intake. Um, so as we moved further along into the, into the design, um, that decision became a lot easier as we realized that doing a double intake would be very mechanically simple uh, given what we have. So we have kind of the same thing mirrored on the other side here um, with a 95 style intake with just one roller. Um, so the way this works is that this intake has one roller that kind of pushes, that initiates contact and pushes the note under the, under the robot. Um, under the belly pan itself, we have um, the new Rev flapper rollers that kind of just kick it underneath the robot. And our kick up roller on the primary intake will kind of pick it up and kind of con uh, uh, kick it up and turn it 180 degrees into the shooter. Um, so yeah. Now, speaking of your shooter, talking about the path and I guess that turret system that you also have. Yeah, so another one of the things that we had committed to pretty early on is that we don't want a static shooter. We want to be able to shoot from um, up, um, up on the subwoofer to pretty much anywhere in the wing. Um, and so we decided to do a rack and pinion pivot. Um, so when the, when the ring initially exits the intake, it's captured by these two max plan rollers. Um, so that'll stow it and it's uh, the note stopped by our two brake beam sensors. Um, so once it's there, the wheels will spin up and it'll eject it. Um, so our pivot mechanism itself is a, uh, is a sector gear um, made out of uh, SRPP main plate and a couple stacks to make up the rack. Um, so we have about 100 degrees of freedom um, to shoot from pretty much anywhere in the ring. Uh, our shooter itself is powered by two Neo Vortexes geared uh, with a one to two obduction. Um, so we have wheels on one side to induce spin, which is a concept that we got from the Rembrandts. Um, so once the note exits and contacts these wheels, it'll go full speed into the speaker and yeah. Yeah, I'm seeing that you guys only have wheels on one side. How does that spin affect your shots? Is it still pretty straight? Like how does that affect everything? Yeah, so we actually did a couple of uh, prototypes with all sorts of roller configurations. So obviously our first thought was just rollers all across. Um, the thing with that is with a kind of bank shot, we didn't see any spin obviously, and that hurt consistency. Um, so we also did uh, rollers on both sides with a gap in the middle. Um, again, that wasn't very consistent. Um, once we got the idea for this concept, we tried it and it worked very well. Um, as far as the, the shot path, um, there is a bit of a, of a curve in the shot at very low speeds, um, which is something that we've had to work through. Um, but at the, at the speeds that we use to score in the amp as well as the speaker, um, the, the note path is pretty straight, so we haven't had any issues with that. Now, mentioning the amp, I see you guys have a slightly of an amp mechanism here to allow your shooter to do that. 
Lyndon, talk to me about that amp mechanism. Yeah, so what was important about this amp mechanism is that it was minimally invasive so we could have more space for everything else. So after a little bit of iteration, what we landed at is this design, which incorporates our shooter into our amp mechanism. So what the robot will do is it will park in front of the amp and the shooter will just shoot, will shoot the note at low speed at the amp. And because this amp mechanism folds out, it will fold out like this, oh, okay. it'll fold out like that. And then the note will bounce into the amp, bounce off of these two sticks, which are covering the top of the amp and go down. And it allows our amp mechanism to be super fast and very small so that there's more space for everything else on this robot. Now, have you guys ever had any issues? Have you guys tested how many uh, rods works or has been two been perfect for y'all? Yeah, so we went through many iterations on how to configure this amp. So one of our first one of our first attempts was just to take multiple sets of rollers so it would, the note would like roll over into the amp so it's a perfect curve into it. However, it was kind of big and pretty bulky and heavy. And then we also tried multiple sets of uh, standoffs here. We tried doing the play and we, tr and we tried also more standoffs in different positions. This ended up being just generally pretty effective al along all of the types we've tested. Now, also talking about your uh, climber that you guys have, seems like you guys are using the Rev uh, elevator telescoping mechanism. Tell me about that. Yeah, so this is the Rev, this is the Rev linear elevator. And how it works is that it uses a it uses a lead screw that goes down the middle of this of the black casing, and then within the lead screw there's a there's a lead screw nut that is attached to this middle tube, and this allows it to go up and down. In addition to that, it also gears down the motor rotations uh, by a lot, so you don't need that much. You don't need to gear down your motors that much, and it also pairs nicely with our Max 180 gearbox, which allows this entire mechanism to be very compact, and it just sits on the side of our robot like this. And it, all together, it allows our robot to climb in a roughly three seconds. Now, I also see that you guys have basically two hooks on both sides. How often do you, do you guys have like a preference on which side you guys like to use or just both side works perfectly? Um, they're both equally as effective. Usually we just go to the front because that's easier. But yeah, we didn't really notice that much difference on either way. Now, Ryan, uh, passing over to Ryan, talking about the programming that you guys have, I mean, there's a lot of systems going on. You got a angled shooter. You got, I assume you also have vision going on. Talk to me about, I guess, your programming overall. Okay, yeah, so about the vision, uh, we really wanted to use vision in our uh, our robot this year. So originally we had uh, two cameras in the front and one was here for aligning to the amp, but we realized that we didn't really need it. So this camera right here, it's used to align to the speaker and also adjust the pivot in order to shoot from anywhere, uh, even like uh, past like the middle line. And then we also have a limelight in the back here uh, that's hooked up to a coral USB. Uh, if you want to see the coral in the back. Uh, so that's used for uh, note seeking. And we can just use the coral USB to uh, seek notes uh, connected to the limelight. Yeah. So you guys are only, are only using two cameras, was three. How has the two cameras been working out for you guys now? Do you guys plan, would you guys have added more or, or move things around? Or how is that working? Yeah, I think so. Definitely, we had plans for another camera, a fourth one in the back for post, but we found we didn't have enough time. And as for the amp camera in the front, uh, we just realized that the it would be faster to just have the driver align himself to the amp. Now, 2714 barbecue, you guys are doing Amazing, yeah, amazing resume this season. Really excited to see you guys continue on. Part of the fourth alliance here at NTX. Really excited to see you guys work towards everything you guys have been doing so far. Team Rev as well. And really excited to see you guys continue on next year. So good luck. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. First Updates Now has become the Fun Robotics Network. Check us out at funroboticsnetwork.com and all the social links that you see above here. And check out some of our new merchandise options that are both fun and robotics related as well too, both on our website and right underneath this YouTube video.